One more thing to get. Okay. We are live from the Dean household. Hoping people can see and hear us. Visitors. Roger's gone to answer the door. Um, I hope you can all see and hear me and Roger when he comes back. If I'm really loud, tell me because I've put the microphone very close to my face. So I don't want to deafen you all. I've been told that my cinematic, incredibly creative camera work is making people feel sick. So I'm going to try and control myself today and uh, be very calm. What was it? <laughs> Always happens. Boring with rain. Dead or night. <laughs> That's when they like to do it. Oh, yeah. oh, After we dinner. We're live, yes. Hmm. Okay. So I need to be over here. Yeah. No moving the camera. No moving <laughs> the camera. I'm going to control myself. There you go. Tonight we're doing something slightly different to what we planned. I had hoped that we would be finishing the um, uh, Halcyon Hymns album cover for DBA, finishing it live, and then it would go off to be scanned. But in actual fact, I thought I'd change that order and have it finished here after it had been scanned. Oh, well, as are the plans of men. They're always... Gods interfere. The, um, it's been scanned, it was finished, and it will be back in a couple of days. In the meantime, Salvador Dali used to do a thing. When he was almost finished a painting, he'd have a bunch of friends and clients round, and they'd all come and watch him put a highlight in the eye, and then drink champagne, or whatever. <laughs> but we don't have that opportunity tonight to see the final finishing touches of Halcyon Hymns. We're going to do something else. Um, the other project I'm doing in parallel now, sort of working on, is a couple of more, couple more paintings for the Close to the Edge anniversary box set, which is a dream at the moment, but we're getting there. And it looks like we'll be finished. Now, it's part of a story. It's part of a story that interacts with the Floating Islands painting. And so you'll see elements of both coming into what I hope will be recognisable still, but still completely new works. Um, right. Great. Sorry, we just had a couple of comments that the sound was coming and going. I'm hoping... Oh. Um, um, let me know if that's changed. It might just be because you were facing... No, that's how I normally sound. That, yeah, that, that's Roger's voice. Yes. It sounds like it is. Frustrating. It comes and goes. <laughs> what can I say? So this is the mic here, isn't it? Yeah, oh, it seems to be stabilising. Okay, we fixed it. Good. Good, good. <laughs> right. So what I'm working on is a series of additional paintings that extend the narrative of the Close to the Edge. So this is um, the second Close to the Edge painting and this is a print of it. Right, lurking here. I'm asking, they're asking for my camera work. Galen says it's great. Brendy <laughs> wants me to spin the camera 360. <laughs> they, miss, they miss my skills. Pay no attention. <laughs> Okay, um, so today I'm going to be showing you stuff. This is an old sketchbook. Hmm. 
Don't worry, I'm going to hold the picture so you can see them. Do they show up? They're very faint pencil drawings. Yeah, they're pale, but they're, they're showing up. Okay. One of the problems with having a very heavy sketchbook. Okay, there's half a dozen of these. Well, half a dozen, a couple of dozen. So the sketches evolve. You can probably hold them up for longer. Uh, am, am I okay. far enough away, too close? That's great. Okay. Do you want me to hold the book as well? Because it's, it's very heavy. <laughs> Yes, it's not so much that it's heavy, it's that it's too heavy to turn the pages <laughs> at the same time. So, is that about right? Yeah. Hey, you should tell me to move the book, not move the camera. But moving the camera is so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> People are loving the sketchbook. Oh, well, thank you. I think they want to steal it and look through it. I was once, in, well there's more, um, but they from a different angle and look different. So I'm going to stay with the first ones for the moment. Actually, somewhere around here I put a small sketchbook. Did you notice that? Oh, I did not. Really slowly like this. Oh, nice. Things endlessly disappear. That is so big. Um. Ah, there we go. I'm working on two or three sketchbook simultaneously so I thought I would show you. So this is a sketchbook where elements of um, the DBA painting evolved but what's in here which I thought I'd show you is how I lay out the future book. I could mock it all up in Photoshop very quickly but I like sketching it because it makes me think more about how the book will go, what the text will be like. It gets me into the space better than just putting the pictures into a grid in Illustrator or whatever. So this is how the book will start and Probably the whole book will be sketched out like this. You may recognise some of the paintings. It's a lot more labour intensive than doing it in Photoshop, but for me it's tremendously more satisfying. So the, the it's almost like tracing paper, isn't it, this, the paper? This sketchbook is exactly like tracing <laughs> paper. It's actually bound tracing paper. Well, there we go. It's not much fun for pencil, but it's brilliant for ink and watercolour crayons because it's, I've said this before, but I'll say it now, the ink works on it very smoothly, so it's great for ink. But watercolour crayons, it has a bite, so it makes the colours look very rich. So is that the way you use it? to do layers of the same painting, to sketch out ideas for layers. Sometimes, sometimes. Anyway, so this is how the book comes together. I, I don't know how many, there's a, there's a bunch more. Right, so it started like that. Little doodles of the pages, and then the pages of the book. So there's.
one day I'll publish some of the sketchbook because that would be fun. I'd like to do that too. Now. So people were curious about what the book that's just that's a sketchbook or is that for anything specific or is that all your ideas in one place? Um, I have lots of sketchbooks. I mean basically I'm sorry I'm walking around while I'm talking, but um Ah, ah. What are you after? I put two pencils down because I was going to start drawing. Oh. Uh, there by the brushes? By the box? Is that them? That's exactly them. Okay, good. How come you know more than I do? Well, <laughs> I'm just very talented. <laughs> well, there you go. You have to keep it a bit secret so I'm not too embarrassed. <laughs> I keep it very secret, that's why that's all the deliberate mistakes. <laughs> there you go. So I don't usually sketch out a picture, a little doodle usually is all I need. But then I work straight onto the canvas. But now I'm gonna sketch it as much for fun as anything else. So I'm I'm looking at a scene which is from below the waterfalls, like some of the sketches we saw before. So eye level will be about down here. So if this is the waterfall, it's so this is the lip of the waterfall. It's all coming here. Now I expect people will think this is a bit rough and ready. Off on the way. Have you ever painted anything without sketching? Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I would say it's more normal now, days, for me to go directly onto um, the canvas and play. But I like both actually. I love sketching and it's, I find it very soothing, you know, to sit down, listen to a great story and sketch. So I do it not because it's necessary, but because it's, an enjoyable part of the process. So this is very rough. Um, I might be inclined to smooth it out and make it look a little bit more finished at the moment. This is um, an 8B. I usually work with thing more in the spectrum of B or 2B or even H occasionally. So 8B is pretty soft. It's not as dark as charcoal, but it's, it's pretty dark. Why did you choose to use that? Because no. um, I thought you wouldn't see it otherwise. You put it, <laughs> it's about as necessary as that you know okay. it has to be visible not just to me I mean, that was my thinking anyway do you keep all your old sketches um yes i do we are currently somebody not a million miles from me right now is in the process of scanning currently you're scanning the a3 ones right yes <laughs> so Christabel is scanning she scanned not much short of a thousand a4 sketches what's about many 
find me. How many do you think it was? I don't know. I just I just went into a daze and. <laughs> <laughs> that explains a lot. <laughs> well, I don't know how many, it, but quite a few hundreds. And you probably I don't know how many you've done, but I've given you about a hundred in total. A three sketches to scan. Yeah. And there are in total probably a few thousand, so I shouldn't have told you that. That would no. be very depressing. Am I less than halfway? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's okay, I'm I'm in it for the process. Good. Okay. Right answer. Lisa asks, so for reference, are we looking up at the waterfalls from CTTE? Yes, this is idle here. Cool. Can you, is that in, in the shop? Well, it is now because I've moved the camera. Oh, damn. Remember, I'm to move the paper. <laughs> Maddie says that um, it's very great to watch you sketching so uninhibitedly <laughs> as she agonises over every pencil stroke. Do you have any advice for someone agonising? Yes, don't. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, Maddie. Yeah, it's you can't do it like that. It's if it's not fun, it's not going to work properly. So there's a balance between paying attention to the craftsmanship of it, but there is, a, there is an argument for why you do a lot of sketching, and that is that the craft becomes automatic and you don't think about it. And the creative part has to go in the same way, actually. It has to become something... Michael Kaluta has a wonderful saying. I'd love to just read you chunks of his sketchbook because he is... he has a wonderful turn of phrase. But he says, oh, OK, I was drawing this. Oh, and that just fell out of the pencil. And it's exactly how it feels, you know. Stuff appears and you think, wow, that's neat. Where did that come from? You might think, my God, did I just do that? <laughs> but it's, it is. It, it, unless you let yourself be free, you'll find it very difficult. And I know that sounds very glib, but it is true. It is true. It's tricky thinking what you're doing and doing it. Um... You couldn't drive like that. You know, when you drive, you have to be aware of what everyone's doing. But if you think, OK, I'm doing 30 miles an hour and there's a dog up there, it might cross the road, should I start braking? If you think and anticipate everything, your brain just won't cope. And what it does is it copes brilliantly if you don't pay attention. Do you think a cat that jumps on your drawing board calculates the distance and how much force it needs it does it and lands on your new drawing <laughs> <laughs> leaving footprints that's right but it doesn't calculate it and that's how we need to get you know that's a, a state of mind that's very important we achieve and f I'm afraid it's something I bang on about all the time now you can do a waterfall that looks absolutely immaculate, which is like a very slow, uh, slow speed photograph. Or you can get all the turmoil in there of the water breaking up, splashing. It's My inclination is to, to show all the splashes at this point. But I have done, like on 
Tales from Topographic Oceans, I left that as almost diagrammatic. Have you ever been to Niagara Falls? I was standing on the edge of Niagara Falls last June. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, I went to see Yes in Toronto and crossed the border with them, which was interesting. And we stayed in a hotel, I suppose, two or three hundred yards from the edge of the falls. So I took a walk up there and stood there for hours, hypnotized. It was incredible. Yeah. We've got someone here from Niagara Falls. It's exciting. Above or below? Well, yeah, maybe <laughs> behind the waterfall is what I'm picturing. Right. Well, Toronto was interesting because, you know, the lakes uh, feed the falls. And um, where, yes, we're performing, the lake, the level of the water in the lakes was very high indeed. And um, the um, dressing rooms and everything were underwater. So it was frantically being pumped out. So I wondered if that had a big impact on the on the falls, whether there was a significantly larger uh, flow of water. It was about a metre or two, a couple of metres above normal in the theatre. Alan Winter asks, why was the why was crossing the border with yes interesting? Oh, <laughs> I, it was just that it it was. It amused me, and I wasn't there, but I saw the before and the after of it, was um, Arthur Brown, who went on first with Carl Palmer. Carl performed with Arthur back in the early 60s when Arthur had his big hit with I'm the God of Hellfire. And he, he looked amazing. He's incredibly theatrical, all makeup and everything. And he came into breakfast with his makeup on and um, and his costume and headed towards the border all dressed up <laughs> so I thought well let's hope we don't have to explain that away apparently it was not a problem but it was interesting and there was a reason for it but I forget that I think if I I know Yes are doing a live album from that tour and I've done the cover for it but it would be good if somebody put out a film of the whole concert with all the different bands because it was a joy to watch all of it. Arthur Brown was amazing, Carl's band was amazing, John Lodge was amazing, Asia was amazing and Yes was amazing. So it was good fun, all of it was good fun. Have you ever seen the falls lit up at night? Same answer, yes, because we were there. Didn't know they did that. They just shine huge lights on Niagara Falls, do they? They did, yeah. Wow. What medium is this going to end up being? Um, almost certainly acrylic. I would say. Have you ever finished a painting satisfied with it and then added something at the last minute? like a tree or, or an animal um, as an afterthought? <laughs> uh, yes, um, unfortunately or fortunately it often happens. I have a painting, I sit around and I sit and it, I look at it and I might think, yeah, that needs this or that doing to it. And I usually enjoy revisiting paintings.
sometimes if a painting is lost damaged and I rework it I enjoy that process too because it, that the revisiting is interesting and fun for me how do you stop a wander a mind from wandering off whilst you're painting or drawing how what? How do you stop your mind from wandering off? I make sure that it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that the trick is not to stop your mind wandering, but to entertain it and take it away. Um, and I, when I'm working, if I'm not talking, I've, I'm very happy working and talking. But if I wasn't, if there was no one around right now, I would be listening to a story, an audio book, preferably on CD. When this becomes acrylic, would, would, would you ever paint over the sketch or would you have the sketch as a reference and start painting anew? This is just paper. Yeah. This is the canvas, so I'm just working on a sheet of paper. Is that just to sound out some ideas? Exactly, yeah, it is. And the paper is soft and smooth, which is much better for pencil than the sort of very, you can hear. That's the roar of the uh, texture on the surface. The paper is much smoother. Currently, the soundtrack to Jerry while they paint, distracting them. From Sorry, you're currently distracting Jerry so that they can paint. <laughs> oh well, but then well, you're in trouble else. if I go quiet, aren't you? Yeah, we we'll have to keep talking. <laughs> right. Did you take photos at Niagara Falls? I did, yeah. I did. And yes, I mean, the, the power of it is awe-inspiring, literally. I mean, that's the most corny thing you can say. But when I was standing there looking at it, I thought, yes, this is what it means. It's the power of it was just stunning. In comparison, this is a tiddly little fall. Are you thinking of colours as you sketch? Um, I'm not really at the moment, no. I'm thinking more of design and I'm wondering if I put in a area which was, say, half a mile away in the distance... So this is so this is another step mm. so what I would hope to do is give the impression this is a few hundred feet higher than this and here so it's coming down in steps I'll work on that that's not quite done in my mind yet but it's it's like um, now this is a kind of um, shape I'd worked on before and I'm, I'm not quite if I was working for real, I'd probably do this on a 
cut out bit of paper so I could try it. So this is a shape much more in the foreground than I think this would be easier in charcoal. Do you ever rub out things that you sketched? Or do you just sketch over them? Um, I do. I don't rub things out so much as draw with the rubber, draw with an eraser. Mm. It's. rotate the pencil as you work? Do I rotate them? The pencil, yeah. Um, I've been thinking, yeah, yes I should be doing just that because I'm getting a very weird chisel shape on there, but I have a spare. Do you have any animals planned for this piece yet? I don't honestly think I've got anything planned. I'm going to wait and see what turns up. Which might indeed be animals. Have you been to any other waterfalls? Um, I've been to a lot of very beautiful but very small waterfalls all over Scotland. I went up with an ordnance survey map and just drove around visiting all the waterfalls. Some of them required half a day's hike and some of them were quite near the roads, but I, I, it was great. I love doing that. Do you believe that anyone can draw? Do I believe that anyone can draw? Yeah. Um, I would say, can anyone drive a car? What would you say to that? For the most part. And some are naturally better than others. There you go. I'd say the same. But you can always learn. Yes, that's the trick. It's, it's a damn sight easier if you learn. And one of the sad things in England, and I believe in America too, is children at school are not taught to do calligraphy anymore. They used to be. You used to have to fill up pages of doing an A, 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 and then B, B, and you'd fill up pages of this. And I remember that I did it. And it was the single most useful thing as a child to drawing, was getting control and um, pretty much being forced to get control because, you know, these were teachers who weren't in the least interested in an artistic result. It was all about legibility and etc so yeah it was useful and now they're not taught that anymore it's a problem and I I find that if you look at handwriting in English of people from Japan for example I, I get a lot of letters from Japan and their handwriting is incredibly good in English not their first language and it is an advantage. It is, it's a discipline worth doing. And as I say, it's a shame that schools have dropped that. But you know, education is a fashionable thing and um, trends come and go. I don't know what to say. It's, it's a shame because I think learning control, physical control, is useful beyond just writing.
do you paint outdoors looking at the landscape you're painting? <laughs> I see the hidden waterfall behind us. I almost never have done that. I have, but it's rare. But I have done an enormous amount of sketching out of doors and tinting. You know, sometimes I take a uh, little teeny watercolour box with me traveling so I do tint the drawings but I don't do a painting per se so this is a lot of scribble but it's kind of indicating the dynamics of a picture and sort of the dark mass this side is pushing you to where the en energy is going that way and the you're being pushed out of this side. So it's kind of demanding an activity in here. So it's interesting for me sketching like this. Normally I would do it tiny. Galen is asking about the painting to your right. What? The painting on your right. Is that a surprise for later? Yeah. Okay. And it's also in this series, so I will finish that. I thought I'd start here with another one, though, with sketching it out. But, um, Have you ever thought of doing publishing a book of sketches or pen and ink and sketches? Ah, is that somebody who wasn't here at the beginning? Uh, yes, I assume so. <laughs> Well, the answer is yes. Um, my sketchbooks tend to have, I don't know, an average of about 300 pages. And there's quite a lot of them. And I've probably got 5,000 pencil drawings, which hopefully one day will get all scanned, um, yep. which are separate to the sketchbooks. And... Uh, Yes, there's a lot of material and I'm not quite sure where to start, but I have had a couple of publishers talk to me who were interested in doing it. So I think it will get done. Yeah. And I'd love to do it. I mean, everything I do gets sketched, whether it's a, a letter, you know, if I'm doing a font, I will draw A, B, C, D and I will sketch each one. Sometimes. I can do it in one go. Sometimes it takes 20, 30, 40 sketches. And of course, the same applies to everything, whether it's a painting or architecture. You knock it into shape this way, move it about. So I'm, I'm thinking this is a bit clumsy, but it does its job, it's a marker. Yeah, I definitely want to do a book or multiple books of the sketchbooks. I wondered what it meant when I bought a copy of Michael's Michael Kaluta's sketchbooks. I've got lots of thin books and they're numbered. But one of them, which is quite a thick book, is called The Complete Sketchbooks. And I wondered, that couldn't possibly mean all Michael's sketches. It could mean a compilation of all his sketchbooks. Any update on face masks? I don't know if I should tell you this, but we did have a whole load delivered, and um, we they were packed to go to the fulfilment house. And Frere and I tried a couple, and they were all marked large, and they were all way too small. They were simply too small. So I don't know where that stands at the moment. We're probably getting them redone. 
So plenty of face marks, masks available for your children here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, eventually, yes. Yeah. Stuart asks, is it possible that talking about Niagara has subliminally informed this sketch? I, I'd started it before we were talking about Niagara. Mm -hmm. but, but why not? Being there definitely did. So this is it. You can't really see that they're too small, but it's, I can feel that it's crossing my ear. So we're not going to put these out for sale until they're done, <laughs> till they're correct. Yeah, it's just the loop that needs to be longer, is it? The actual mask is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the end product is wrong, and that's, uh, you can't tell. That's true. We're talking about this on the, um, the Q&A for and Iowa, but just to show you. So we finally have the proofs for the 2021 calendar. And that will be available in the shop online very soon. I'm not quite sure when, but definitely very soon. Wow. So that's to take your mind off the masks. <laughs> <laughs> that looks cool. Getting some appreciation for your fashion modelling there. Quite right. A missed opportunity. A missed opportunity. You could also model your own clothes. <laughs> In the Valentino line. I've not. Yes. I, yes. I Let's should ask them to yeah. send me some. We need you in a shirt. It was quite amusing though, going to a, a Paris fashion show. I hadn't done that. What inspired you as a young person to start art? I don't know. I just did it, you know. It was... Um, I was always trying to get hold of scraps of paper to draw on. It was... It was yeah. I was obsessive about drawing. Um, depends on age. When I was very young, the only thing I can ever remember drawing was spaceships and sections through spaceships. <laughs> and this won't be approved of tanks. <laughs> airplanes and tanks so but yeah I love doing spaceships and then as I got older I got very excited about drawing animals so there came a point when I wondered if I could have a career doing that painting animals and designing the future that was my ambition And designing, the idea for designing the future came from a uh, comic, the Eagle comic, Dan Dare, Pilot of the Future. See the damage comics do? <laughs> Mum 
Malcolm says at the Valentino show, did Lewis Hamilton realise he was in the presence of greatness? <laughs> Suitably humble replies are acceptable. I have no idea what he <laughs> realised. <laughs> I um, I think it was. Um, I don't know. It was interesting to see him. Who is he? I know nothing about fashion. Is he? Oh, you're in dead trouble now. Yeah. You. Well, if people <laughs> were, could see me on camera, they'd already know I know nothing about fashion. So. Well, I don't know if, if Lewis Hamilton does it, but he's um, he's world champion Formula One car racing. Oh, champion. okay. What was he doing there? I didn't ask him <laughs> that. I said, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> there are no cars here. Why are you here? I just think he must have thought it would have been fun to hang out there. I don't know. I don't know. I guess he was invited and thought it would be a cool thing to do. Okay, so are we getting near that point of We're getting quarter to, two? Yes, yeah, quarter we are. two. So I'm going to. Um, sort of ease off drawing now, wind down, say thank you very much for joining us. We are starting, oh, what are, what's the word? We are starting a new class of drawing with a bigger emphasis on drawing and um, working in watercolour than I did last time, which was mostly acrylic. And we're launching that on the 7th of October and we're going live on the 28th, I think. And that day is an interesting day because it's the last day of English summertime. <laughs> so it's gonna, I'm going to be confused that. about the starting time. So I have to make sure I look very carefully about what time we start now. And you, Christopher. Oh, yes. You can be an hour late. I'll be, <laughs> I'll be two hours early just to throw everything. That will do it, yes. Um, uh, is there anything else we have to say? Yes, we're going to redo the masks. That's exasperating, but we will have to. Um, the calendars are looking good. They're coming along. And the book, which I keep on talking about. Um, I had a long chat today with Mike in, if he's there. Mike, <laughs> I'm dropping you in it by saying you and I will be working together on this. Um, yeah, hopefully we'll start showing pages soon. Great. Uh, we have any news on the house? We've got a meeting tomorrow with the engineer. Uh, solve one small hiccup on the way. We'll keep you posted. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, everyone.